good morning to all today we are going to study that is a new chapter related to our analog communication engineering along with that we have started uh, two or three uh, before two or three lectures that is a type of internal noises along with that type of internal noises pip type that is a high frequency or a transit time noise that high frequency or a transit time noise we are going to study uh, right now that is a high frequency or a transit time noise that is a, if the time taken for that electron to travel from emitter to collector of a transistor that is a become comparable to the time period of that signal which is a being amplified then the transit time effect will be take place this is the types related to high frequency or a transit time noise that is a low frequency is related to low frequency noise and high frequency noise is related to high frequency noise which is generated uh, during that transmission this effect is observed at a very high frequencies that is typically in a very high frequency ranges due to a transit time that is means uh, before we have studied that is a low frequency range related to that very low frequency ranges and this high frequency noise is related to very high frequency ranges that is the effect of some carriers may diffuse it back to the emitter this gives rise to an input uh, admittance that is a conductance component of which increases the free with frequency there is a very small current is induced in this input of a devices by means of the random fluctuation in the output current will be created that is a random noise at a high frequency once this noise appears it goes on increasing with the frequency at the rate of a 6 db per octave then it will be introduces a very very high frequency uh, range of noises according to that very high frequency noise how we are going to calculate that high frequency noise here i have taken one example related to that calculation of very high frequency noise the just i am going through that statement of that very high frequency noise that is in an amplifier has a bandwidth of 4 megahertz with a 10 kilo ohm as an input resistance calculate the thermal noise voltage at the input to this amplifier if the room temperature is 25 degree centigrade that is a b b is a bandwidth is equal to 4 megahertz ri is equal to 10 kilo ohm temperature is equal to 25 degree centigrade that is a 298 degree kelvin that is rms noise voltage Mm, which is given for very high frequency that is a formula that is a vn is equal to uh, under root of 4 ktbr that is a 4 into what is the value of k k is nothing but boltzmann constant what is the value of that boltzmann constant that is a b k is equal to 1.38 into 10 to the minus 23 then temperature that we are going to take the temperature in terms of kelvin for that purpose here i have taken that is a 298 into uh, multiplied by what is the value of b b is a 4 megahertz frequency but we are going to always taking that bandwidth in terms of hertz only for that purpose that megahertz is converted into hertz by multiplying 10 to 6 that is a 4 into 10 to 6 into what is the value of r r is a nothing but 10 kilo ohm but always we are uh, going to take that resistance in terms of ohm for that purpose that kilo ohm is converted into ohm by multiplying 10 to 3 then by taking square root of all these terminologies we get that is vn is equal to 25.65 u micro volt this is a voltage related to that very high frequency uh, effect units for this is all the types related to high frequency or a transit time noise then other type of a noise that is avalanche noise then this avalanche uh, noise is a related to we know that the avalanche avalanche or breakdown take place in the uh, reverse bias that is a pn junction diode in this process of that avalanche breakdown all the force of the electron in this is dependent dependent totally depletion region uh, gain sufficient energy from the reverse bias to filter to ionize the atom by the collision that means atom are collapsed togetherly that will be introduces that is a, uh, our avalanche noise this process may, this produces may be holes or electron which further ionize more atoms to produce a more holes or electrons this chain process ultimately leads to avalanche the electron to atom collision takes place in this process give rise to a large noise spikes in the avalanche current this type of a noise produced unwanted voltage spikes which should be avoided specially when the zener diode are being used to a voltage difference however the avalanche noise can be used in the noise measurement structure and along with this that avalanche noise will be introduced due to the electron and volt ionization process then last type related to internal noise that is a burst noise we are going to study that burst noise here in shortly that burst noise is where that burst noise is introduced or where or what is the role played by that burst noise in internal sources of noise or internal types of noise we here we are going to study that is burst noise <coughs> 
बस नॉइज इज ए अनदर टाइप ऑफ ए लो नॉइज फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑब्जर्व इन बीजेटी बायपोलर जंक्शन ट्रांजिस्टर दिस नॉइज इज एफेयर एज द सीरीज ऑफ ए बस नॉइज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ए नॉइजी पर्सन हेज द नेम बस नॉइज एफेयर हियर दैट मीन्स इट इज ए ऑब्जर्व इन द बीजेटी नॉट इन ए एफेटी दैट इज इफ द बस पर्सन नॉइज इज ए प्रेजेंट इन एन ऑडियो सिस्टम देन इट विल बी प्रोड्यूस एज ए पॉपिंग साउंड सो दैट इट वल्सो नोन एज ए पॉपकॉर्न नॉइज That means popping noise is introduced by that burst noise. For that purpose, that burst noise is also called as a popcorn noise, depending upon that popping nature. The sources of the burst noises are not yet clearly known. Where that burst noise is occurred, that slow sources are not yet clearly known. But where, where, whenever we are going to use the BJT circuit in every, in every kind of electronic devices or circuits, that burst noise is introduced there. This is all the structures related to internal sources of noise. Thus. Today we have finished all the seven types of internal sources of noise or internal types of noise. That is a short noise, avalanche noise, high frequency noise, low frequency noise, burst noise, then flicker noise. All the types of noise related to internal noises. There are seven types we have studied very well, and which will help us to reduce or minimize or to identify internal noises which is generated in our electronic circuit, and that will be helpful for us. to reduce or to minimize minimum uh, error introduced the signal and it will be uh, clarify or it will be transmit very clear and a very pure signal towards the receiver which will be helpful us for the transmission purpose with very clarity of that signal okay thank you